And I'll just head across to Pranoj to talk about the derivative action. Before that, I'll head across Samir Dalal, who joins me now in studio. Samir Dalal from Nafarla Sons and Sun Stockbroker. Samir, how's the market looking? 7,600 intact. Are you taking heart from that? Or are you saying, let the Fed event at least pass by? No, I'm not taking heart from mm -hmm. that. Um, I honestly am of the opinion that the market should correct. In fact, the last time I was on your channel mm -hmm. as well, uh, I think the index was about 7,900. And I said, look... Uh, this is not sustainable. Hmm. I still believe this market is heading downwards. Okay. Um, I don't want to spook the market and give <laughs> where my expectations yeah. are, but taking technicals, looking at the fundamentals, looking at you know just the global events, hmm. there are no triggers to take the market up. I mean, GST being passed yeah. was one of them, but that's not really going to. It's just a sentimental change. It's not going to change the way GDP is, right? right Doesn't now. change earnings for you either. For at the moment, yeah, and. Uh, the Fed event is there, which is of course going to be an overhang, but I think that will just be a one day kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of hoping it gets done, yeah. gets out of the way, that overhang is, you know, gone. gone. And you can actually focus more on relevant events that are happening in the Indian market. Hmm. So, uh, how I look at it is, yes, there is downside. Uh, the 7540 is just a number. It's just a bottom. It's not like a support level. Uh, hmm. It's not going to hold. Um, Technically, uh, what I do do is look at technicals and fundamentals. Okay. And on the technical thing, what it's showing is like a head and shoulder breakdown, okay. which happened at about 7727. All right. Um, yeah. So I'm expecting a good downside. Um, don't think the markets <laughs> are going to hold. Yes, there will be individual stocks, individual pockets, uh, or sectors maybe which will outperform hmm. uh, based on certain events that happen. But all in all, the index is going to be lower than that. Samir, yes, right. Samir being cautious, they're not trying to be the Cassandra of crisis, but saying there will be some more downside. What are the derivative market indicators, Pranoy? We were talking about earlier as well, and you were indicating that uh, what Samir is saying is probably what's being indicated in the market uh, uh, fundamentals on the derivative side as well. Well, absolutely. That was pretty much brewing and we have had quite a dis dismal December series, at least for now. We have had almost uh, eight or nine sessions of which the most part of it we have seen major declines. Uh, if you talk about the premiums, and that has also been one of the highlights of this series, at least till now there's been a, a huge uh, call writing pressure that has been seen. And ever since the first two or three sessions, we have seen a reversion of the put call ratio owing to that to lower levels of around 0.74, 0.75. Take a look at the kind of uh, premiums that have been eaten into on the higher call side. Uh, 8,000 call re being reduced to almost single digits compared to 121 what it was on the first day of this of this month 8100 call single digits again compared to 78 8200 call also so you have seen a lot of premium being eaten into by the writers uh, as far as uh, the higher level options are concerned on the lower level put contracts you have seen some put protection buying also coming in as far as the FII goes you have seen that hedging of index futures selling and index options buying going on so the possibility of options uh, being bought at the lower level cannot be discounted we've seen that open interest exposure also increase off late as far as FII is open positions are concerned on lower level put options you've had uh, the, the 7800 put as well as 7700 uh, put expand materially. Interestingly on the bank nifty that support of 16,800 has also been given up and you have seen uh, the 18,000 call as well as 17,500 call where there has been aggressive writing seen for the bank nifty and look at the way the premiums have contracted there. All this premium, the difference has been eaten into by the writers and the bears are laughing all the way to the bank. Uh, talk about uh, the lower put contracts here, 16,500 and 17,000. Yeah, take a look at that. 221 to 700 is what the premium on one one lot has gone up to, and for a 16,500 put, it's more than tripled. So uh, there you have it. So uh, it has been uh, bearish, the momentum, and uh, obviously uh, the bears are making a lot of premium, at least till now. We've got uh, information coming out today as well uh, from some of the large stocks, be it the banking or, or technology that we'll address as well. Uh, there have been rains in South India, which has impacted a large part of IT. With I'm going to come back, so we talk about uh, the fact that earnings are not going to look good. We've heard from TCS now, uh, who says the Chennai rains were quite impactful and will have a material impact uh, on December, on the October to December. October December is not going to be a good quarter for anybody. You've heard it from uh, the likes of the Infosys as well, talking about how margins are not looking as great. Uh, you had worries coming in from TCS as well. All in all, is it looking like it's going to be a very tough quarter? It would be a tough quarter. Like you said, it is going to have an impact. But everyone knows this is a one-off impact. So I wouldn't factor this into my yearly projections. Mm. It's a one-time hit that they will take. So I do think the IT space still is one of the better spaces if I look at it from a two-year horizon. Mm. They are going through a tough patch from the business point of view. 
because of certain changes that are happening in the IT industry. Mm. But this uh, monsoon thing is something that is not something that is worrying me. I don't think the market is going to react too negatively just because of a couple days of, of maybe, you know, a couple weeks of lost business in um, China. But lost business in a, in a quarter that anyway has lesser number of working days. So I'm saying the overall Q3 picture yes. is not going to look Q3, good. Q3, the numbers are going to be weak, but it's, it's not like all the operations were happening out of Chennai, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it's a small part of the operation. So some amount of hit will be taken. I'm sure they have... Uh, people who could have done some of the work, you know, some mm -hmm. of the uh, excess work in their other offices, so they could have kind of compensated for that. I wouldn't look at it that too. What I do la look at in the IT space is how you, how quickly you'd be able to modify your business to the new things that are coming out in the IT space, robotics, yeah. uh, you know, digitalization. And I think some of the larger players would be able to survive that. Mm. Innovation is something that is going to be looked at in a, a large way when it comes to IT. And not all of the companies are innovative. A lot of them are just like your generic pharma companies just doing the, uh, you know, services in services part. So those guys may find the impact in the IT space and mm. slow down. But your Infosys, um, to some extent TCS, they would be able to withstand some of these problems. So on corrections, I would definitely look at these two stocks. Mm. Um, like I said, in the near term, yes, you're right. Bad results. Stocks would head down. Yeah. No trigger. But from a longer term point of view, you always want to buy these stocks when they're coming down, not yeah. when they're rallying, right? That's when you really make the returns. I mean, yeah, your superior returns of 25 plus percent. Yeah. So this is where investors need to start looking. They need to start uh, identifying those pockets like it need not be IT. It could be outside yeah. the IT. It could be something like a LNT. It could be something like an HDFC bank that corrects. It could be ICICI bank. So there are pockets which you can invest in. Yeah, it is not an easy dart anymore. I'm going to pull up the year-to-date chart of how the IT index has done. Remember, for the year so far, the IT index, the other ones outperformed the uh, benchmark Nifty, is still negative for the year, about a percent and a half lower for, on a year-to-date basis. TCS has been a gross underperformer on that one. TCS is down almost 7% for the year, while Peer Infosys is up 65 for the same time. So there is a there is a shift of preference happening and that's been quite apparent uh, through the year as well. What are the markets looking like? Let's hear a few more market experts that we caught up with during the Arvind Sanger to Vipav Kapoor as well as the JP Morgan view coming in. In India, frankly, the disappointment has been that the earnings growth story has not come through. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I believe that <coughs> in India we're starting to see some of the green shoots emerge. I think that there are some good uh, uh, indicators that uh, that things are the virtuous cycle is finally coming to take hold. Unfortunately, the macro picture in terms of anything coming out of New Delhi uh, remains somewhat murky as the GST bill continues to drag on endlessly. Uh, and I know some people got excited when that committee came out with some recommendation that that would be the breakthrough. But you know, I, I, I've kind of uh, you know I, it'd be a pleasant surprise when it happens, but I'm not holding my breath on that one. India displays uh, one of the highest growth still in the whole region, and earnings growth is still one of the very of, of the highest. Uh, and um, investors have been looking for that growth. I still believe India is a, a very good medium to long term story. Uh, we have no doubt about that. On the back of um, cons continued consumerism, uh, the reform and restructuring that's taking place, favorable demographics, and so on. Um, I think in the near term, perhaps uh, valuations uh, are probably on a relative basis a bit more on the expensive side, uh, and we may just see some short term, um, a short term breather. Yeah, it is definitely a correction, uh, but that correction has now lasted for what, about nine months, uh, which is a fairly long period of time for a correction. But before that, we had a very, very uh, strong bull run, so probably, uh, you know, the correction is getting longer because of that. Uh, but I think the real reason is lack of earnings growth. So we've got uh, a lot of uh, things to worry about uh, in the coming months. Uh, one of them is going to be banks. Samir, uh, the banking index is in trouble, no doubt. I can tell you Monday there's a big meeting happening at the RBI. They've called on the chiefs across the board from banking industry to talk about how SGR and 525 might be being misused. you think there's an NPA blowout that's still on the cards? I wouldn't say it's a blowout that's on the cards, but yes, there is an NPA problem and it's been there for a while. But is the extent of it really fully known at this point? I don't think it's fully known. Mm. I do believe there is still a lot of uh, skeletons in the closet. Mm. But if you look at it from what is already known, it may not be as significant and as large. Okay. Uh, 
most of the market knows what the problem is, where the debt lies in the infrastructure space with the power companies, with uh, you know road companies and things like that. So it's all known. Uh, this is just going to be the final nail in the coffin for them. I mean, not nail in the coffin, but mm. just the final clearing of the the books that is important. Uh, RBI had initially, you know, there was a lot of rumors doing that by FY17 they want all the PSU banks to clean out their books yeah. and yeah. start up from there again. So this could just be the beginning of that. Hmm. Get your things in order. You have money coming in from the government. If you need to go out and raise some more capital, they may give them some avenues. Uh, you might see some amount of consolidation coming in because you know certain guys just have way too much yeah. uh, rubbish on their books. <laughs> so uh, that could be you know you know. So uh, how I look at it is a lot of the negatives are priced in. Hmm. You have your PSU banks trading at half time book and some of them even lower than that. Mm. Uh, the only banks that are trading at real premiums are your HDFC and your Indusind Bank. Um, there's not going to be major impact to them. But what will happen is, what once this clearing happens, then I expect PSU banks to start bottoming out. And that is something I would look into. Yes, there's going to be this problem that happens maybe Monday come Tuesday. And these are all one-off events. Right. You need to look a little bit long term. You will probably get a correction down. So if you get a correction, look at your banks. Look how bad the NPAs and the restructured books are. Hmm. Uh, see how much can be sell. I mean, you know, you can dig in a little deeper. <laughs> you can get some sort of yeah. information. And you can come out of it. And you can probably buy into those. ICICI Bank kind of facing the similar problem. Yeah. But it's still got a lot of value. You know, you've managed to free up some capital by selling your uh, insurance business where they freed up some money, your, uh, mm. your housing finance subsidiary where they freed up some money. So capital is coming in for these guys. So I don't look at it as a major, major problem. Yes, there is going to be a, some trouble. Yes, the technicals are showing weakness and there are some uh, downside opportunities in that. But those, again, I would look at the premier companies as buying opportunities and not it's something like open up. it's not something like it, the story is done and yeah. dusted with right yeah and then I think that's the that's the value investing that people talk about that and use this opportunity but use it smartly here are what Raghuram Rajan had to say uh, at the Calcutta board meeting a post that meeting on whether the SDR norms of the 525 are up uh, for review at the RBI uh, a whole lot of uh, of ways that uh, banks can uh, essentially deal with the stressed asset. Um, having given those powers, we are now looking at how those powers are, are implemented. And uh, um, the idea being that these are meant not so much to postpone the day of reckoning, but to actually deal with the stressed asset in an effective way. And as we learn about the way they're being used, we will obviously have a dialogue uh, with the banks. Samir, um, amongst all this is the entire mid-cap bandwagon which has been soaring. Looking at some of the stocks that have been rallying, um, one starts to worry uh, and starts to wonder whether looking at the index is worth it at all. What would you tell investors at this point that are wanting to ride the mid-cap rally? Uh, be careful. Uh, so, coming back, uh, should you look at the large cap? I would think you should look at the large cap. You know, the mid-cap and the small cap basket has really, really outperformed the large cap over the last month. Mm. And if you go back into history, you will always notice that whenever the large caps underperform and the mid caps start outperforming, you've kind of reached a dangerous point in the yeah. market. Uh, what eventually ends up happening is the retail investor gets stuck with this stock, the stock's correct, and then yeah. they keep waiting endlessly for those <laughs> prices to come back. Yeah. And they never do, right? Yeah. For many of them, I mean, I'm sure that many of these people stuck on GVK, GMRs, yeah. Lancos, uh, you know, I mean, many of them. But if you look back and see, your Larson in the same space of construction activity has made a new high. Yeah. So, this is a dangerous point for mid caps. Uh, you know, everyone has that FOMO effect going on, <laughs> fear of missing out of the next big yeah. thing. Um, no, don't don't have that. Uh, be careful where you put your money. Focus on companies with value, which have strong fundamentals, strong balance sheets, uh, which will grow. Before, the, like, you can't have mid cap stock growing when the large cap is struggling, right? Yeah. Uh, you will have your larger guys being able to generate the first amount of business. No doubt there will be certain pockets in mid cap which will continue to do well. There will be single stocks which will outperform, like your Aisha Motors, which has done really, really well, yeah. or Shri Cement, which over the last few years did really well. So you'll always find a few of those. An outlier within a sector. But An outlier within a sector, or even a sector, for example, like one of the sectors which I think is quite interesting is the movie exhibition space, both okay. PVR and Inox. 
uh, they're market leaders in their space. That space is still very, very underpenetrated. Mm. Uh, it's growing. So you know, yeah. like a Talwalkar's better value fitness is something which there's underpenetration growth yeah. is there. So you might find those outlier mid caps. But to say that every stock in the auto ancillary space is going to be the next multi bagger because the auto industry is doing really well, mm. I don't think that is something I would fall back on. You know. I would take a slight uh, control response to that. Every day you have a new stock hitting a 52-week high there, yeah. whereas your your front line is having 52-week lows. Hmm. So that is a uh, this I mean a problem which is going to reverse itself. Okay. You will see the mid cap underperform. So I would advise most of your viewers be cautious. Don't rush into these mid caps right away. Wait. Watch what's happening. Uh, if you miss something, is okay, but you don't want to end up you losing money. Burned. You don't want to be you know, Warren Buffet says it's okay to miss out, but don't lose your yeah. client's money. Yeah. And I honestly believe this is not a time to lose money. Preserve capital. That's going to be noted. Thank you, Samir, for joining us today. That's Samir Dalal talking to us from Natural and Sun Stock Broking. Uh, that is a wrap on Markets uh, Rewind. Thank you so much for watching. A lot more coming up. 5.30 p.m. on date with the IIP as well. This week on E-Ink, Cash Karo, we get chatting to Swati on how she plans to take the business to new heights. I think there is definitely potential for a unicorn in India and I think Cashback can be one of those. In the next five years, we should be driving between one and a half to two billion dollars of GMB through Cashback.